I thought I'd give you guys a little kind of behind the curtain uh, rather than taking you to the more polished space uh, in Pilsen. Where did you study? Wow. Are you going to give us your background? Oh yeah, sure. Um, I did my undergrad in, um, at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Uh, where I was trained as a metal sculptor. Oh. So like Richard Hunt and, um, you know, I've, I've sat under him for some time and uh, many, many, I was, I'm a metal head by training. I taught <laughs> figure metal uh, sculpture at uh, School of the Art Institute for about four years. Um, and uh, you'll see a little bit of my metal work here uh, represented, but I was trained as a figure, figurative metal. So a lot of, I, I will make figures and people and kind of abstract it, very Giacometti-esque looking kind of work, if you're familiar with who that is, but they're basically macy kind of long uh, uh, figures. Um, and then I kind of transitioned a little out of that, as we talked about. Um, and then I went back to grad school uh, at UIC. So I actually teach in the space where I went to grad school. So I, I always say I'm a tri-factor, I'm the, you know, the student, the alum, the <laughs> professor, the staff, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, I can give you kind of a lot of different <laughs> angles on the UIC experience. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, this is predominantly the space. This is my workspace. Um, we spent a lot of time today trying to get it just to be dirty, um, right? <laughs> it was a lot worse in here, um, not just a couple hours ago. Um, so I thought, what, what I have here also, um, it just kind of opens up. There's a couple other spaces that aren't really used, but it's the dorms. We'll go in there maybe a little later. I'll show you a couple things. But um, what I thought we could do is after maybe just, just kind of look around, move some things around. Nothing's precious um, except that piece, that gold piece. That is very precious, actually. Um, <laughs> that's the only precious thing. I don't really, you know, other than that, uh, look around. And what I thought we'd do is I have some chairs here. I have some boxes. This is a part of an ongoing installation that's meant to be used and sat on. Oh, was um, that at um, Hyde Park Arts Center? It was. I sat on them. No, 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 no. Those were John Preusses. Oh, okay. Very similar. John is a good friend. John is a master builder. I wish I could be as masterful as John. But um, very similar concept, but a little different. Um, also, there's chairs in here. So what I thought I'd do... Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, what I thought I'd do is, um, I don't know where to start, right? There's a lot of work. What so what I'm going to ask you guys is to work, pick something earlier up. Earlier work, maybe, and then an evolution of thought. Or, you don't have you to use it. Or, or, you guys just point to something that you're interested in, and then I'll talk. I'll tell you why and where. Okay, perfect. Little chairs on yes. boxes. Yes, yeah. little chairs on mm. boxes. Yeah. All right, so. And then the wallpaper. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you notice these. These are all called studies in isolation. They're a lot about space. Um, I started doing these. So there's two parts. First, I'm going to talk about the scale, and then I'm going to talk about the chair. Uh, the scale has to do with um, when I first came here, I was a metalhead. So you see all those sculptures up and down um, uh, Lakeshore Drive, those huge sculptures. So that's my old community. That's my keep one of my communities, my metal community. They make big stuff. Yeah. And I was just trying to keep up with the big stuff making. You know, so I did the last thing, I did, I did this like 16 foot, 18 foot sculpture. I found materials that, um, you know, when you do shows that scale, you don't do a one month show, you do a three year show. Because it's just so much movement. So we have this space down at Purdue North Central. If any of you ever read Sculpture yeah. Magazine, there's, um, there's a, uh, not a collective, it's a, it's a membership based thing, but it's called ISC. So there's Chicago Sculptures International. A lot of them are metal sculptors. Um, and they, do, they use the campus as a, an exhibition space. So I did that. And then I started questioning why they, and they came back. And I didn't know what to do with it. Because a lot of that stuff is for sale, but people don't know. It just looks like the city owns it. But it's not. It's actually for sale. And a lot of that sale stuff is as inexpensive as some of the stuff you'll see in my studio. Like, it's not as expensive as you think it might be. Because these are broke artists that are trying to make a living. So the stuff is actually... Fairly, but just there's no way of knowing that. It just looks like public artwork. But people are intimidated because of the size. The size. Right. And they don't know where to go to get it. And they don't know where to go to get it. Right? Yeah. Like, like they're just available, right? Yeah. So these are all the frustrations that come out of that community. But anyway, so I started to question. You? you said what? So how do you? I don't know. Because I got a <laughs> game. Right. I stopped making <laughs> stuff that big. Right. Okay. Okay. Because I started questioning why I was making stuff that big. Right. And then I started questioning like, what is the thing that I want to leave on this planet? Like, do I, you know, the thing that, you know, a lot of it is like, you make something big and it lasts forever. Go ahead, Mark. 
you know, I, I think like when you make something that big, it does make it more impersonal. Right. You know, uh, it, but making something like here, you can, you know, people are not as intimidated. Right. You can easily put it, you know, you can't put it in your pocket, but you, you right. can see yourself taking that, you know, I mean, it's just simple stuff, yeah. but it's, you know, but, but, right. but, but, but why would a person make something that big? Well, I, you know, I, I call it the big phallus. You know, he's like, how big can you make that thing so everyone sees it until infinity? You know, it's like, look at what I did. You know? So then I started quite, is that really kind of for me, you know, not like casting judgment on my friends, but it's like that's not really I was more about like the one-on-one -on -one kind of connections that I was having with people at the South Side Community Arts Center, these artists, the people in my neighborhood. And then I was just trying to figure out, so this is kind of just that. They're all called studies in isolation. It's all about trying to keep, create some type of isolated space in a very small mm -hmm. and compact area. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to walk you down the hall, and I'm going to show you something. It's kind of tight. We're going to go in and kind of wrap around. I'm bringing you back. This is kind of important because this is actually the piece that brought me to Chicago and the piece that most people kind of gravitate towards. Just a little cool piece. You guys are really getting some. Like, you also need to see the architecture of the Yeah, no, I just covered the photos. Um, and, yeah. Oh, there is actually one, though. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, they're probably down there working on that. So, yeah, just go in and take a look. Uh, yeah, take a look. How old is this building? Probably around the same time. You guys probably the church is directly first because it's just very tight. Because of that. Whoa. So the dog's locked up, don't worry. Aww. I like dogs. Well, you haven't seen the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a Doberman? It's a pit bull. Ooh. He's a nice Isn't that pitbull. awesome? That, that is. Wow. He sits there and barks at me. And then the echo makes it work through the sound. So cool. It's like the size of the nun's So this piece here was um, <laughs> kind of the first work I did, and it was dedicated to my mother. Uh, my mother passed away from ovarian cancer in 2001, um, and I, fresh out of undergrad, I came back to take care of my mother in her last kind of year, um, and she was similar, you know, we, we, we all become our parents. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother used to be executive director of a space for African American Family Services, which was basically uh, an organization set up to support families that were afflicted by chemical abuse. Mm -hmm. So she believed that um, your family may be dysfunctional, but you, it's the only family you have, so we should try to restore that family rather than get rid of it. Um, once again, very powerful, strong woman in the community, but at home she was ailing and would come home and be very vulnerable. So I was the primary caregiver for her, and um, I kind of shut down, and um, once she passed away, I kind of went into severe depression, very obviously. But the artwork is what kind of brought me out of it. So I started making these chairs, and the chairs were symbols of my mother's support through kind of the rust, you know, the ailment, just all these kind of metaphors within the chairs. These are 72 chairs um, for 72 medications and vitamins that she was taking at the time of her passing. Um, after she passed away, um, my girlfriend at the time, who is standing here now, it's my wife. I got a job in Chicago and told me that this town, Chicago, is pretty good for art. So I thought I'd go down there from Minneapolis and see what's going on with this art thing in Chicago because um, I wasn't making any money in Minneapolis. I was just working in my uh, former garage with no heat and the only way to stay warm was to keep working uh, because of the blowtorch. Um, so I came here and, and very quickly uh, was able to become kind of a self-supported artist, full-time artist, um, through support from the South Side Community Arts Center and other networks. But this is kind of where it started for me. This is the first piece. Um, you can see the similarities to studies in isolation. Uh, the work evolved from being about me and my mother to being about people that I would come across. So the chairs you see in there aren't the same chairs as here. They more so represent the people I come across, observe. They're very figurative in nature. So uh, yeah, so I think you have to kind of see this piece. This is the only one left in that series. There are about nine of them. Um, throughout, some are in the University of Howard University, some are in uh, some collector's homes, and each one of them is, they check in with me often. Um, so this one's kind of hanging out um, until I find the right space for it, um, mm -hmm. some place where they'll display it 
and it can have the impact that it needs to. But um, this one relates to kind of all of us. Uh, we've all mm -hmm. had someone, a loved one, who's had to go through uh, something similar. Um, so it just, it's a very powerful piece that, uh, yeah. I ask a lot of questions. No, 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 um, right. All right. First of all, it's an interesting connection that she worked with substance abuse, and then the, the final like, homage to her is just filled with all this medicine. But when you were making these chairs, um, I see that the, the the back support on all of them is these three mm -hmm. things. I'm always looking for meaning. Like to you, did yeah. that have any significance? Not necessarily. I've always been drawn to the shape. number three. Okay. Um, um, you know, the number three is just very important for multiple reasons, and then mm -hmm. aesthetically, I just kind of thought that this was the most striking way. The other, th these are actually the smallest ones. The other ones uh, range from six feet up to 13 feet. So wow. they're really massive, and they usually have figures falling off of them. Um, this is the only one without an actual emaciated figure, which represented me. Um, mm -hmm. This is more dedicated to my mother's struggle. The other ones were these kind of really large huge figures kind of falling off, kind of very dangerous, uh, playing around with balance and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Okay. So this is very early on in my work. Was it a sheet of metal that you that you used to look at? This is all metal out? material. So the same uh -huh. stuff you see the guys kind of moving through the city with shopping carts. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay. It's the same stuff that I would use. So I often like give them a little bit of money and yeah. take a little something. And then you cut it and then you, mm -hmm. but for the legs and stuff, mm -hmm. It's a separate piece that you saw her. Each one of those yeah, you, right. see, yeah. you see those are, yeah. are very, it got very hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it can get very hot. Uh -huh. um, yes, so uh, each one of those are welds or, or right. blow to, um, cut, um, plasma cut. And where did you do this original piece? I finished this, started this in Minnesota and finished it. This is the first thing I finished when I came to Chicago. Okay. Not, not here, obviously, that was a little more. Yeah, yeah, in my studio in Pilsen. In Pilsen. Um, actually, um, you know, you talk about getting in a trance, um, and I used to work for hours and hours in the studio, and we used to have these metal plates that cover the wood, and I just had this very fond, this, this, this very, this memory of working on this piece and not realizing how hot it was being in the studio. The metal plate, I was up about two feet off the ground because it was so hot, it buckled, and I didn't realize how hot it was because I was just so focused. But the pieces were falling on the ground, they're heating up the metal, so the whole room was kind of, it was a small space, but uh, the, yeah, I, I don't work a lot like that these days, but um, but yeah, those are fond memories. So the, all the legs and all the backs are pieces of metal that you found, and then your technique of, of you cut yeah. them, and then like whatever you did in your I studio, made, you made it that together. texture uh -huh. on there, and then uh -huh. I didn't clean it. So the idea was to kind of capture those emaciated mm -hmm. once again, kind of you know uh, rusting or ailing or however you know that the, it, yeah it looks like it's kind of fading, but at the same time it's very strong. Mm -hmm. And the metaphor of the chair is a great metaphor for your mother. Yeah. Um, your mother kind of gives you that support, well, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, your mother gives you that support, and you don't really, when I talk to kids, I talk about y'all came in the classroom today, you sat in that chair. Mm -hmm. You didn't check to see if that chair was going to support your way. Mm -hmm. Same sort of way a mother does that without looking to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. It just kind of happens, and mm -hmm. you just take it for granted. What a great <laughs> analogy. <laughs> <laughs> so all the mothers in the house, that one's for you guys. <laughs> But well, let's move back into the studio. I want to walk out so other people can walk in. Oh, yes, yes, for those. I actually have a collapsible metal studio. I actually have a dream studio.